Hey there, welcome back everybody. Today I thought I would do an overview of uh, several perfumes from the one house. We're going to be talking about perfumes from the house of Jorboy Parrot. Um, and I have got six of them here. I've got samples of six perfumes. Uh, I have already done a review of one of their more popular ones, that being Private Label, uh, and I will link that up uh, on the screen now if you're interested in watching that. So the perfumes I'm going to talk about today, um, I might just introduce them as I as I talk to them. This won't be these won't be exhaustive reviews, although I've worn a few of these, uh, uh, you know, several times enough to to have us have a solid opinion about them but let's get into it so the first one i'm going to talk about so i'm, I'm talking about them in uh, order of release i guess so the oldest uh, ones and in the description i will mention um which ones i talk i'm talking about as well first one i'm going to talk about from uh 2011 i think this is psychedelic uh now i have mentioned this one before uh, and what I've got is a little, my little strips here with the dry down happening. I'm, I don't have enough skin to actually do this on skin today, but I'm just going to spray this on. So what you're going to mainly get from, from this one is patchouli. Okay. But this is, uh, a very, yeah, very, it's almost like the, the essence of the patchouli has been uh, extracted from here. It is very, very smooth. It still retains earthiness, but there's no, there's no what I would describe as sometimes uh, the roughness of patchouli. It's, it has tones of brown to me. There's no greenness in this. It's, it's just a beautiful uh, velvety patch, but where, what supplements this patchouli here is uh, this combination of vanilla and musk. Now the musk that um, when I first sprayed this on that I had not really detected or hadn't um, hadn't occurred to me. This musk very much reminds me of candy musk, um, the type of musk that you, the musk sticks that you can buy uh, as candy. So it's got a sweetness, but I find that the sweetness is just just at the right um, the right point to not push it over the edge of being too sweet. Some people, you know, I, I'll say this now: it, it does not remind me of something like Coromandel from Chanel, uh, although they are a similar type of perfume. But I find the Chanel a lot sweeter than this one. Th this is just all all luscious smoothness um, wrapped up in a patch and vanilla musk bomb. And and this one is a stayer on the skin for me at least. And and it projects really, really, really well. So psychedelic, in case you haven't worked it out, is one of my, my favorites. And that's what you're gonna get pretty much from that perfume. The next one I'll talk about is uh, Ombre Premier. This one here, I have, I've had this decant of Ombre Premier for probably a couple of years now. Um, I've just never gotten around to reviewing it. Now, what I will say about this one here is it's a predominantly vanilla amber based perfume when it dries down, but in the opening, there is very distinct rose in this as well. Uh, and the one thing that I've always thought about Ombre Premier from Javoy was that this is almost an, a what I would describe as a warm weather amber. And I'm not saying it's, it, it is a, you know, spring summer perfume, but I'm saying this amber has, has just the right amount of lightness to uh, for you to be able to wear it in warmer weather. Uh, this one doesn't, on my skin does not last very long and there 
there is it's a vanilla based amber there is rose uh, like i said in in the it's a fresh rose as well um i think there's other fresher notes blended in with them they're the main things that i get and there's just this lightness about it that that never gets heavy like a lot of other amber based perfumes can get but i will say uh, for me even though it has those points of interest for me i, I find this a little bit uh for want of a better word, vanilla. Okay, uh, so the next one is Le Jour Sans Fait. Okay, so this one here, I find as a composition the most interesting, but that doesn't always mean <laughs> it's it's a good perfume. What I find interesting about this is, is the combination of notes uh, uh, in here. I get this very green, sour tobacco note. There is also angelica note that adds this kind of, um, it's probably making, making it smell like a greener tobacco. And there is this boozy combination. Now, I couldn't put my, my finger or my, yeah, my finger on the exact booze note I was smelling. Um, it's indistinct. It doesn't, you know, be, not being a big drinker, it didn't remind me of anything in particular. Um, so for this, I did look up the note pyramid and, and one of the perfume websites does list gin as a, as a note. And I totally get that. Um, although, you know, I never drink gin straight. It, this is actually what it does smell like, and it's in combination with um, other other pungent spices. There is there is like I think there is something sweaty in here as well, like cumin. This is not a pretty perfume. It's a very interesting composition. Um, there are elements of this that remind me of. 1740 by Histoire de Parfum, which is one of my favorite perfumes, but nowhere near as well blended or as pleasing to my nose as that one. But I can see that there is there is definitely some elements of that that might have been inspired by that perfume. I mean, it's interesting. If you're into spicy tobaccos with a bit of, and you don't mind um, a bit of, there's herbalness in it as well, this might be one one to try. That's uh, Le Jus Sans Fait. Okay, next one I'm going to try is uh, Latte de la Guerre. And this one here, I'm, I'm not entirely sure about. This one to me felt like the least impressive one. I get quite a fruity opening. Um, to me, it it's it's very juicy. It's almost um, it, it's there's definitely a rhubarb kind of fruitiness to it. Apple is listed as a note, but I don't notice an apple note in here so much. There's nothing really that excites me about this type of perfume, let alone this one. Although, I would suggest that if you like fruity um, florals, this is more fruity than than floral, uh, this might be one that, that you would like. Uh, again, it's blended, um, it's blended quite well. There is nothing that smells off putting about it as well. I think, I think this, this one is just one that you have to kind of like a little bit of fruitiness to me. It's just a little bit, it's bright. It's a little bit, um, happy, but you know, that's, that's a real mood, which I currently am not in. This next one is Incident Diplomatique. Uh, this one here, where Je Boy Private Label really um, showcased Vetiver with, along with a leather accord and 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 patchouli. Incident Diplomatique uh, again. This is a beautifully nutty vetiver. And what I like about this one is that 
it, it it stays it stays woody, but this develops and and becomes quite dark, unlike a lot of other vetivers do. The, you know, like okay, my my reference here is something like Gerland's vetiver, which kind of retains its brightness throughout the wear. That's a, that's a that's a bright summery or springtime vetiver that has that has a certain sharpness to it. This vetiver is definitely for me nuttier. It's it's a bit um, it's a bit woodier. The, there's a wood. There are woods underneath this vetiver that definitely support support it. It's it's. I just feel like um, it's. I can I get I can imagine this where vetiver roots are prepared and they're placed on, on wooden benches um, that have been, that have kind of been polished from all the years of work on them and, uh, and the oils or the essences from the vetiver roots remain on that wood. This is really a textural perfume. Um, and I love the way that it gets dark. And I think it's the patchouli that comes in later on that, that lends it its darkness. This, to me, for me, is the most grown up of the perfumes that I'm smelling here today. In fact, as much as I did like, do like psychedelic um, as a patchouli scent, when I smell this, I feel like, well, this one's a little bit of a class above it. I think I really, really like this one. My my issue would be in considering buying a bottle of this is whether I really need this type, another bed of a perfume, I guess. Cause I think I have things that cover this off already in my wardrobe. Okay. Last one that I'm going to be doing is one of the releases from the last couple of years, the last few years. This is remember me now. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is, for gourmand lovers, okay, which is not me at the moment. This is a full-on vanilla. I get a very biscuity vibe. You know, it, it, there are things that I've smelled that are similar to this already. Um, I, I get a little bit of a combination of perfumes. One of them, oh, now the name is escaping me. I'll when I remember it, I'll, I'll put it on here. It's from, it's from the house. I don't remember either. It's, it's right here. I'm putting it right here. It reminds me a bit of that one. Uh, a, there's a little bit of Jeux de Peau from Serge Lutin, but mainly when I smelled this for the first time, I couldn't stop thinking of Feb Delicious from Christian Dior. So there's a combination of that. So you can imagine this is quite sweet. This is quite biscuity. Um, it's definitely gourmand. So if you like that, this is this is really good. It's just not my my current style. And I think I would find this this definitely is not as suffocating as something like Feb Delicious. Um, I would imagine that this wears quite close to the skin, but. Regardless, it's well blended and definitely fills um, a, a, a gap in their line for a for a gourmand. Although, you know, it's it's like I say, it's been done before. Um, so they're the six Jaboy Perry perfumes that I've talked about today. If you really want a comprehensive review of any of these ones I've talked about today, let me know in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts uh, are about any of these perfumes i think this is a i think overall this house is a good quality house they they seem a lot of their perfumes have um fans uh and they don't seem to need to promote themselves overly much by sending a bunch of bottles out or whatever and the the praise i hear from uh, uh, of Jovoy or about Jovoy is, is to me real kind of word of mouth stuff. So definitely looking to trying some. I think for the quality you're getting, they're, they're reasonably priced and not uh, uber expensive like uh, like some other niche brands are. Although, what is niche? Anyway, 
Um, so I, I quite enjoy them. I, I, I would be on the edge of wanting a bottle, one or two of these as a, as a bottle. Probably uh, Ancident Diplomatique would be the closest I would want a bottle of. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it was um, helpful in your sampling decision making and your online compulsive shopping. Uh, I'll see you sometime soon when I get motivated. Bye.